This is a compact Yomi production. to not be so careless in my sunflower field. Looks like someone needs a lesson on how to take care of my flowers. So as you can see, when you damage one of my flowers, it makes the others sad. Every individual flower is precious, which is why we must take care of them. Do you now understand why you should be careful when playing in my sunflower field? That's how it should be. Now go and play, but be careful this time. Are you sure you want to go to the store right now? The weather's not looking too well. Yeah, but this is the only time of the year where they sell chocolate cherry cordials, and they go out fast. And I don't want to let them slip from my fingers like last time. That's my box of chocolate cherries! What dost thou declare? Tis mine! That was the last box and I had it. You snuck behind me and took it. And whither is thy evidence yond I did doth such a transgression upon thy person? There are security cameras around. You're not getting away with this. Saith few or none, thy shall not entertain thee. For I gave my coin to its purchase, and hath in my tenure thy certificate of authentication. Ahwakiyo, pray and who? Those were mine to begin with. You stole them from me. You better give me that box right now, you thief! Who is it who calls a cut of us? For thou triest to taketh mine purchase. That was the last box, and I put them in my basket. You practically stole them when I wasn't looking. Not till one tradeth thy ducats is an item claimed. Doth sayeth Lord, thank you. 
I'm not playing around, Futo. How about you give me that box right now? Or thou shall shove thy foot up, the ass. Hey, don't eat them in front of me! If thou askest nicely and courtly, then Lord Mononobe shall beseech thee with a morsel. <laughs> Those were mine to begin with. You better give it back to me. Hark! Hope! Mistress Hakurei doth wishes to rob me of my property and my maidenhead. Your what? Then doth not threaten to a force fornication upon thy posterior. To make a long story short, I put my footo up her asso, but she ended up eating all the chocolates by that point. Well, I'm not going through that again. I'm going to the store this time when they are fully stocked, and then take all of the boxes so that nobody can have any. That's called justice. But you can't afford even one box, let alone all of them. What part of take all of the boxes did you not understand? Ah, I see. I told you the weather was gonna get worse. It's not that bad. And the store isn't that far from here? There's no way we're gonna get through this. We need to head back. No, I want chocolate cherry cordials. It's not worth it, Raymu. But I want chocolate cherry cordials. I'd rather die before I get them. If we keep going, we are going to die. Then bury me with all the boxes. They'll have to get through my vengeful spirit before I let anyone have any. With this storm, we can't even go back. We need to find temporary shelter. Look, there's a cave. Looks like the wind isn't coming in here. We should relax until it calms down. How long is that going to take? I don't know, but we got no choice but to stay here. I guess this is my fault. I got too greedy. Don't beat yourself up, Reilu. Though it would have been nice if this was a hotel instead of a cave. Wait, there's a door over there. Is this someone's home? It probably is. I mean, why would it be furnished if it wasn't? Maybe we shouldn't be here. Well, we can't leave until the storm comes down. Besides, it doesn't look occupied, and nobody's crazy enough to go out into a storm like this. I still don't feel right about this. It feels like we're trespassing at chocolate cherry cordials. The storm isn't calming down. Looks like we're stuck here for the night. I'm getting tired now. I think I'll go to bed. Yeah, me too. I think I'll hit the sack. There's only one bed. Yeah, and? Forget it, Marisa. I'm not entertaining that thought. I'll sleep on the floor instead. Considering this place has carpeting, that's a come up. You don't have to do that. Let's just share the bed. With you? No thanks. You get all grabby. What do you mean, grabby? Do I have to spell it out for you? You're pretty frisky when it comes to sharing a bed with others. Hey, what are you insinuating? When it comes to being bedfellows, your lifestyle is incompatible to mine. Okay, I get it. I guess I do get a bit excited when I have a pretty girl in my bed. But in you in particular, you don't have to worry about that. Are you saying I'm not pretty? I meant I respect your decision to live a celibate life, you know. I'm not going to do anything to you, even if you are a very pretty girl. Oh, all right, I guess. Wait, what did you mean by me in particular? This was just like how it was when we would have a slumber party. We used to share a bed back then when we were kids, remember? Back when I had red hair and you had the disease that made your hair purple? Yeah, and you were grabby even back then. Oh yeah, Mom used to say I was an early bloomer and pitied that you were not. Don't get any weird ideas, okay? I keep telling you I'm not going to touch you, not until you appear in my dreams. Have you ever thought about not sleeping around with everyone you encounter? Don't you think you should instead just find a husband? Nah, life's too short to settle down. I just want to have fun while I'm still alive. But you're also trying to achieve immortality. Just a hobby. Marissa, I worry about you. You're living this wild and fast lifestyle. Don't you think there's more to life than just constant pleasure? Of course I do. Why do you think I'm learning new magical spells? I'm trying to be the best witch in all of Gensokyo, after all. Again, you're trying too hard to impress people. Or perhaps yourself. I'm just saying... You're going to burn out eventually and... What happened? I knew it! You just can't keep your hands to yourself! I didn't touch you. Yes, you did. You grabbed my leg. I told you I wasn't going to touch you. To think I trusted you. You're supposed to be my best friend. You really are insatiable. I'm telling you I'm keeping my hands to myself. Then who's touching me right now? 
whose hand is on my leg right this moment. Where did that arm come from? I don't know. The bed must be a yokai. I never heard of a big yokai. Besides, all yokai then enter Gensokyo transform into pretty and well-developed young girls of questionable age. It's a rule or something. Wait a minute. Now that I look closely, this isn't a bed at all. It's like a bunch of woven fibers, like silk. Silk? So there was someone in here after all. It's eternity. A friend of yours? Eternity Larva, the butterfly fairy. I don't think I ever met her. Yeah, you did. Remember back during the Four Seasons incident a few years ago? She was the first person we ran into. She was at that party you had in a previous winter. The one where she turned your shrine into summer. Come on, you remember her. Yeah. <sighs> Sounds like one of those two-bit characters that people go crazy for when introduced, and then quickly forget weeks later to simp for Sakuya once more. A never-ending cycle. But putting that aside, I was right. We did intrude into someone's house. We better apologize to her. How can she still be asleep with all this commotion? Hey kid, are you awake? Hey, I think she's dead. Dead? She can't be dead. Fairies can't die. Of course fairies can die, and I think we have one deceased right here. But then again, let me check a bit more. Maybe she's just a heavy sleeper. No way, she can't be dead. She was alive and well a few videos ago. Well, she's not moving now. Oh man, is she really dead? Now what are we going to do? I don't know, but looks like she's not waking up. Uh, Raymo, you already confirmed she's dead. Will you stop poking her already? I'm just seeing if she really is dead. Yeah, she's dead. Ah, oh, man, I can't believe that eternity is gone. What will Gensokyo be like without her? Well, the same, I guess, considering she wasn't popular to begin with. In any case, looks like she died a peaceful death. Probably of natural causes. Maybe the cold got to her and she couldn't leave her house to get medical treatment. But in the end, there's nothing we can do. Wouldn't it be better if a natural doctor diagnosed her? What for? I did exactly that. Look. At this point, there's only one thing we can do, and that's give her a proper funeral. But there's a storm right now. We can't go outside in this weather. We're going to have to wait till the weather clears, which means we have to sleep with the recently deceased. And I'm not looking forward to that. Are you afraid she's going to haunt you? Why would she haunt me? And because you ate her chocolates. You ate them too. Just a few. You ate half of them. But it doesn't matter. It's not like she was going to eat them. She died before she could do that. Well, don't worry about it. I have an idea to ease your worries. I don't think your plan is working. But she's out of sight, isn't she? Yeah, but the method you use doesn't make me feel any better. Do you want me to put her inside the trash can or see if she fits in the garbage disposal? We are so going to be haunted by her. The storm has passed and it's a clear day. I guess we can now proceed with giving her proper burial. All right, let's get this over with. All right, I'm ready. Don't just leave her in the bag. That's beyond disrespectful. Oh yeah, how inconsiderate of me. All right, let's go. You didn't have to dig it that deep. Since your home is vacant now, I figure the new owners can turn it into a cesspool and build an odd house on top. This is supposed to be a grave. It can function as two things, like how I demonstrated just now. Stop saying things that are definitely going to get us haunted. But in any case, it's time I give her her last rites. We'll begin with the eulogy. Today we are gathered here to commemorate...
Eternity larva. Eternity larva. What can one say about little eternity? Well, not much. Give her to me. I'll give her a proper eulogy. All right, fine. Whoa! I then knew eternity for as long as many others. But she was a nice fairy who was always kind to her friends. By the way, Raymu, don't you think we should inform her friends about her untimely death? Nobody's going to come to a funeral for a stage one boss. I guess you're right. Well, Eternity, looks like your life did not live up to your name. But in a small amount of time you were with us, you brought us joy and happiness. Well, actually, you kind of didn't. I mean, Okina did use you to spread all that seasonal energy causing the Four Seasons incident. You were a bit of a psycho when you were juiced up in that seasonal power. Sorry for beating you up during the incident, but me and Reynu had no choice. Oh, I remember that part. But putting aside your momentary god complex, when it comes to fairies, you were one of the good ones. You weren't like the other fairies who play pranks on people, who find joy in being mischievous and a menace to society. Nor did you join in any of the debauchery that fairies usually involve themselves in. You never partied until late in the night. You never drank any booze, nor stole anything from anyone. You never smoked any weed or snorted any of Star Sapphire's magic pixie dust, which we all know by now is cocaine, which is why she's in jail. You never used profane language, was never violent, was always polite around others. In other words, you were the most boring person I've ever met. You were just an innocent child that was taken away from us too soon. No, actually, you were like 10,000 years old. Maybe it was your time to go. But a child you were. You played in a sunflower field to your heart's content. Your intelligence was that of a fourth grader, which in fairy culture makes you a genius. And you retained your youthful appearance after being alive for so long. And by that I mean you never seemed to reach puberty, so you still have the body of a nine-year-old girl. Which is a damn shame, because if all you put those buns in the oven, I bet you would have had a nice cake. But sadly, because of your lack of maturity, you never had the pleasure of knowing what it was to fall in love. Or to know the joys of being married to a husband. Or the excitement of being invited to one of the wild and crazy orgies that three fairies will occasionally have. But then again, you always refuse our invitation with disgust, which you totally missed out on because those parties will get super wild, especially after Star's magic pixie dust. And those memories will always be with me and my camera. And by the way, Raymu is looking at me right now. I figure I should digress before she has a noble funeral. Eternity Larva, may you rest in peace. May your soul depart to a better place. May your corpse not be discovered and violated by Sega and then you've heard the wings. Put those wings down. It's not like she needs them anymore. Bury her with her wings and her horn as well. You know, that's the part of a caterpillar that excretes a foul smell, right? Oh, I thought that was just her rotting corpse and the mess I made in the grave. Let's move on, okay? I'm about to give her her last rites. First thing I want you to do is to lower her into the hole. Gently. Then say that first. Now I'm going to perform a purifying ritual to guide her spirit up to the heavens. Do you have your phone with you? Yeah. Can you go online and look up Shinto funeral ritual? You don't know? I just need a reminder, okay? I've never done a funeral service before. All right, fair enough. Okay, according to this article, the first thing I must do is to... Remove all her clothes and wash it with oil, salt, and vinegar? Okay. Then I have to do a ritual dance that involves the priestess stripping off her clothing along with the rest of the funeral attendants? That sounds weird. And then after that, we take the corpse, lay it face down on a table, and with the deceased body's posterior protruding, sodomize the anal cavity as another person urinates on her mouth. Oh, what the hell is this? Are you trying to send the poor girl straight to hell? I just looked up funeral ritual and clicked on a random article. Blame Google, not me. Sorry, but I saw you having a good time. I wanted to join in. 
Will you please stop taking her wings? Are you sure there's buried treasure here? No doubt about it. I can sense something on this spot. Oh boy, I wonder what it could be. Larva finally woke up from her hibernation. That is why you must be careful around the flowers. Do you now understand? That's more like it. Now, be a good girl and play safely. Yeah, I get it. Looks like I'm going to be punished. I guess I'll just have to sit through a lecture, just like Riggle did. Alright, go ahead and let me have it. I guess I'll put up with a boring lecture. Spirit wants revenge for eating her chocolates. Be gone, vile spirit! Hey, that talisman should have frozen you in place! Wait a minute. You're alive! You're really alive! You're actually alive! Yuka has a soft spot for insects, so maybe she'll take it easy on me if she thinks I'm a butterfly. 